All right, thanks for being patient, everyone. It's so important that we all have access and are able to hear the content. So we appreciate your patience as we figure this out. Um, as I said, we are gonna be recording this event. And um, so if you miss something, you'll be able to access the link. And we're also gonna share the link out with others who aren't able to join us tonight. So um, later in the evening, when we're asking questions, if you're not comfortable appearing on camera and being recorded, because if you ask a question, uh, you will be recorded, you can do that in the chat. And you'll have um, opportunities to ask questions at the end of the presentation. All right, so for our agenda tonight, Ms. Fernandez, slide sharing. All right, let's move to the agenda slide. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna talk about some really important school information for this school year. We're gonna walk through what a typical day is gonna look like for your student. You know, we have some new health and safety procedures in place. We're gonna talk about more of the, the COVID-19 health and safety items, and then we're gonna provide you opportunities for questions at the end. And here's Ms. Fernandez with the land acknowledgement. All right. Um, we acknowledge the original inhabitants of this place. So the Stohomish people and their successors, the Tuolip tribes, who since time immemorial have taken care of, hunted, fished, and gathered on these lands. We respect their sovereignty, their right to self-determination, and we honor their sacred spiritual connection with the land and water. By acknowledging these homelands, we commit to working with tribal nations to further the educational aims they have identified in our classrooms and schools. Thank you, Ms. Fernandez. Many of you are familiar with Chase Lake, so you know what our priorities and what we value here at our school. We always keep social emotional and academic academics as our focus. You also know that we value family and school partnerships and that the health and safety of your student, your family and our staff is our priority. And we are working to create a safe, inclusive learning environment that promotes a sense of belonging for each and every student here at Chase Lake. All right, Ms. Huffman has some updates for us on class lists. Hi, so Class lists come out this Friday, September 3rd at 9 a.m. They're gonna be posted in the main entrance of the school. I'm assuming outside, is that right, Sean? Yes. Um, and just a reminder to please maintain physical distancing when checking the class list. They also will be available in Skyward. And then another reminder, the first day of school will be for first through 12th grade will be next Wednesday, September 8th, 2021. Kindergarten will start the following Monday, September 13th, 2021. The last day of school will be Friday, June 24th, 2022. Start time for school will be 8.40. End time will be 3.10. Thank you, Ms. Huffman. All right, since we have some new rules around families not being able to come into the school building the school year, we thought it would be important to share some pictures with you about what the typical day your student's gonna have will look like. So in the morning during drop off, if you're driving or walking with your student, we want you to come to the front of the school and use our main parking lot and drop off your student right at the front. Now. Uh, we're going to have a lot of adults at the front of the school also receiving your student. And so we'll help them find their new classroom, connect them with their new teacher, um, and make sure that they're feeling comfortable and finding everywhere, finding everything that they need to. 
And for your kindergarten student, we're gonna make sure that they're supervised and safe every step of the way in terms of when they're entering the school. If your student rides a bus, that's awesome. You have a bus lane and the bus lane drops the students off right next to the commons. So the students will enter the commons and then go to their designated areas where their grade level lines up. Now, um, if they need help finding where that is, we're also gonna have adults in those areas as well, directing students. All right, so the classrooms, a few things that are different this year. This is one of our sixth grade classrooms. And what we're doing is to the extent possible, we're trying to distance students three feet apart. Um, we're thinking about how we're grouping kids to do small work and we're accessing technology for that. And we're also using the option of being outside doing a lot of that work. Um, please know that we're disinfecting and cleaning daily. Our teachers are cleaning high touch areas in the classroom. Our custodians are coming through as well, doing a really thorough cleanings every day. And we have some good protocols in place to make sure kids are washing their hands every day, multiple times a day, or using hand sanitizer. You're going to hear more about that soon. And also that our HVAC, that's our ventilation system, that's maximized to blow in a lot of fresh air from outside. For the cafeteria, our custodial crew has just been cleaning it up, but I wanted to show you, we wanted to show you um, how we're gonna set it up. And so we have the half tables. So students will sit at a half table and all the students will face the same direction. So no students will be face to face in the cafeteria. We recognize this is an important time for kids to be safe because their masks are off while they're, while they're eating. And we've also, if you can see in the back of the picture, we'll be opening up the blue wall connecting the commons to the gym. So we're gonna have overflow space. So we can make sure that um, the tables are spaced out and the students are all safe and enjoying their lunch. And those of you who are new to Chase Lake, uh, lunchtime is a very supervised time. There'll be lots of adults in there helping your student and giving them reminders. And this is one of our play big or little toys. So when they're out here and they're having a great time, we still have them have their mask on because as you can see, there's lots of little areas where students can cluster and play and have a great time. And we wanna make sure that they're safe while they're doing that. Because if you're hide and seeking four kids underneath here, we wanna make sure they have their mask on. Um, this is one of our cool features of our um, playground. And you can see our big toy, a little bit bigger. And you can also see we have four square courts. We have a really large field that expands across the whole back quarter of the, of the school where kids can play and run. And you see this little hill, they can go and play on that as well. So there'll be different designated play areas and each grade will have their own play area and that will rotate. So everybody gets to play on different things. Again, that is to keep students safe and to keep students as cohorted as possible. We also have an amazing um, community garden that we'd love to invite you to be a part of, especially if you're new to our community. It is an amazing resource that our students um, cultivate and lead with one of our fifth grade teachers, Miss Khalil. And as you can see, we have fruit trees. We've got different an herb garden that's just gangbusters. The garden had its heyday a few weeks ago, but um, as you can see, we have plenty of raised beds. So if you have a green thumb and wanna help out, this is a great place for you or your student. All right, let's talk about some COVID-19 health and safety protocols we have in place. Um, our school will follow the latest guidance from the Washington State Department of Health and Snohomish Health District to ensure we're doing everything we can for the health and safety of our students, staff, families, and our community. This school year, um, we will adopt any new guidance that changes. And so like Ms. Fernandez said, masks are required inside and outside while on campus. We're gonna, main phys remain, uh, we're gonna maintain physical distance. And then before arriving at school or within a district building, we ask that you check your student for COVID-19 symptoms. And if a student's sick, we want them to stay home. All right.
next slide, please. Yeah, so there's some good resources for you. The Edmond School District has a COVID-19 health and safety handbook for students, staff, and families. Uh, Ms. Fernandez is getting all these links together for you and also putting them in the chat. And it's gonna be updated regularly. And it's gonna answer uh, many of your questions regarding COVID-19 mitigation and other health and safety plans here in the district. All right, many of you remember last year, um, we had our students do a attestation, a health check before they came into school. This year, that's not a requirement. Um, so we're not requiring proof of a daily health check at this time for students and staff. However, we're just asking, like I said, that you're tracking and checking your student daily, you know, looking for symptoms and having them stay at home if they're not feeling well. And our staff is expected to do the same. Some of the symptoms to be looking out for, if you could just go back one, sorry. Um, fever, right? Uh, slightly over 100, a cough, and it's a cough that's um, a change in their cough from baseline. So shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, chills, unusual fatigue, muscle or body aches. So these are the things that we want you to be looking for, as you all are, are anyways. New onset of a headache, sore throat, sudden loss of taste or smell, congestion or runny nose, which is unrelated to seasonal allergies, nausea or vomiting or diarrhea. All right, Ms. Huffman. Yes, okay, so Mr. Silver talked about this a little bit, but just a little bit more about cleaning and disinfect disinfecting here at Chase Lake. Routine cleaning will be prioritized in highly used areas and spaces with a higher risk of generating aerosols or bodily fluids. Thank you. Um, and then Mr. Silver also talked about this, but I'll say a little bit more. Um, so we're we're um, very committed to optimal ventilation at here at Chase Lake and at all of our schools. But um, just to let you know, the HVAC systems have been set to maximize the amount of outside air introduced into the buildings. Filters have been upgraded and will be changed regularly. All right, um, hand hygiene. Students and staff are required to wash and sanitize hands upon entering the building and wash and or sanitize hands very frequently throughout the day. Um, we're gonna have a little short video from the district on this and give me a moment to share that with everybody. And... Sorry, one second. Um... I'm trying to get the sound for you guys. One moment. Yes, there is no sound on this. Um, we're not watching a video. We're looking at a parking I'm lot so overflow presentation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm so sorry. This, there's no too many screens. We go.
All right, let me make this. And as masks, you want to make sure that everybody is wearing them both inside and outside. Again, that is to keep your students as safe as possible. This is a short video with mask wearing. I am hoping that this one does have sound because that would be lovely. Um, yay, sound. <laughs> no, no sound. Let me see if I can leave for school, be sure to grab a clean mask and two or three extras to keep with you. You'll also need a bag or a container to put your used mask in if they get dirty and wet while you're at school. That's when those extra masks will come in handy. If you forget your mask or run out of clean mask at school, don't worry. Your school will have an extra for you to wear. Now let's talk about the correct way to put on, wear, and remove your face mask. Step one, wash or sanitize your hands. Step two, hold your mask by the ear loops when you put it on over your ears. Step three, make sure it fits well across your face. The mask needs to be over your nose and under your chin and fits snugly around your face. If your mask has an adjustable piece on the nose, pinch it so it fits really well. Step four, when your mask gets dirty, wet, or it's time to take it off, remove it by the ear loops. Don't touch the front of the mask. That's where the germs are. Place the mask in a container or in a storage bag that you brought from home for safekeeping. If your mask can be thrown away, put it in the garbage. If your mask is the kind you can reuse, be sure to take it home and wash it. Step five, this is very important. Make sure after you take your mask off, that you wash your hands or use sanitizer to wash those germs away. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, um, that we had, we're limiting access to both uh, families and volunteers. And this is difficult for us because, um, you know, historically we've had a huge group of volunteers here at Chase Lake. So um, I know many of you want to participate and support um, our students and our school community. So I'm asking you to hold and hopefully sometime in the near future, those opportunities will be back. Um, so campuses are currently closed. Um, but our, our main office is here for you, right? So when questions come up, um, feel free to, to call us directly in the main office. Um, our office staff is also really good about um, working with families at the front of the school. So if you just buzz us, um, let us know you're out there. Uh, we'll come out and work with you. That's worked out really well. And just remember, um, when you're coming to the school, even if you're outside working with office staff, make sure to wear a mask. And uh, yeah, and hopefully um, in the near future, things will look different. So we want um, every student at our school and, and throughout the district are gonna be assigned a Chromebook. Our first graders and fifth graders will be getting new Chromebooks this year. So make sure they bring the, their current Chromebook back on the first day of school and they'll be able to exchange it for a new one. And our, obviously our new incoming kindergartners will get Chromebooks as well. And we're asking students that they're bringing their Chromebooks home with them daily. Um, on the instance that there may be um, a positive COVID case here, case here at school, and if there's required quarantining for close contact, um, we wanna make sure that the student has access to their Chromebook. And so we really need to be intentional about um, how the Chromebook um, is being transported safely, right? In the backpack with lunch and water bottles and things. Um, one thing that we have done in the past was use larger Ziploc baggies and those worked out really well. And there's also um, shipping envelopes that have the uh, bubble wrap on the inside. Um, they have a larger model that fits the Chromebook. So a couple of different options to be thinking about um, in terms of just keeping the Chromebook safe. All right, and I saw some questions coming up 
in the chat about if a student is sick or needs to isolate or quarantine, what's the protocol? So we're gonna make sure that our students are receiving their assignment at home. And our district website has more information about the state's attendance policy. And on the um, outside chance that uh, an entire class would have to quarantine, um, then we're gonna shift to a, a temporary remote setting. And for our students who are unvaccinated, which is most of them, if not all of them, it is a 14 day uh, quarantine if exposed to someone with a positive case. There is COVID-19 testing here at Chase Lake and all schools in the admin school district. Um, it's not rapid testing. So your student could be tested here in school, but the results happen uh, two to three days. You'll receive results two to three days afterwards. And this is one of our key mitigation strategies. And as I said, it's uh, available in all of our district schools. And it's absolutely free. I'll write a little bit more about COVID-19 vaccine. Um, the vaccine is currently required for all school employees. Uh, the vaccine is available to anyone 12 years and older at this time. And for more for information, you can go to the Snohomish Health District's website to learn how to book an appointment or just to learn more information. And Ms. Fernandez, I'm assuming that link's gonna be in the chat, is that right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yes, um, there's no link that they've given us on this one, but you can go to the Snohomish um, okay. Health District. Thank you. Yes, and I will put that into the, into the link list. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, and then on to performing arts, or for Chase Lake, that means band and orchestra. So at this time, Washington State Department of Health guidance ensures all students have access or will have access to their chosen performing arts course. That means that students at Chase Lake can do band and orchestra if they want to, right? The fifth and sixth graders. Um, so if you're interested in learning more information about that, there will be updates on the Department of Health on the COVID-19 health and safety webpage. Next. All right, and then school bus information. Is your child taking the school bus to school? If so, please note that all passengers and drivers are required to wear a mask on the school bus. Um, and also just a note about bus stop and route information. It should have come out on Skyward last Monday, August 23rd. There is a new way to access that bus information in case you haven't gotten it. Um, again, all these links I'm going to put into the chat near the end so you guys have a chance to, to get to them. And then I'll also link a document where they'll all live with some descriptions. Um, it may take me about it'll till tomorrow to get them in there, but yes. The Edulog Parent Portal app is a new way for families to access their students' bus route information and track changes and updates. Download the app today and get familiar with the new digital tool. We recommend you do it before the first day of school just to give yourself um, some familiarity with it and it'll help you in case you need to change anything or any other um, shifts in your student's bus. We have free breakfast and lunch for all students. It's this wonderful program. You no longer need to stress about paying for or packing your school meals for your child. Meals are free for all students in our school for the entire 2021-22 school year, which is awesome. Um, there will be menu and information available starting on Monday, August 30th, which was this Monday, and it will be here at this bit.ly um, ESD menus, which again, I will be putting those into the chat in just a little bit. And yes, you can still bring food from home, but it, you don't have to if you miss it. We gotcha. And we definitely want you still filling out the free and reduced lunch application. So even though your student is going to get a meal here at school, 
um, those applications uh, open up funding from the state and federal government for our school. Now, it helps pay for a lot of programs here. All right, and if your family does need financial support, eligible students and families, please come out. Okay, that's what we said already. Um, yeah, it's everything I just covered. Yes, and to answer the question in the chat, if you don't qualify, we just, we want everybody to fill them out. It's great information and helps us access funds. Here's a link to the application, which will be in the chat. All right, and so on to Skyward. I'm sure some of you have heard about Skyward before, but just a quick mention, Skyward is our system for accessing and for you to access your students' educational records. Usually it has stuff like your students' grades, family contact information, bus route information, and more. Um, so we encourage all of you to get familiar with Skyward and that information will be made available if you if you don't know how to access. I'm assuming that information is going to be made available to you as well. <laughs> and I have one more. Oh, there we go. Last but not least, I'm going to tell you we're hiring. So apply online today. Um, if you or someone you know is interested, um, we are in need of school bus drivers and um, food service workers. So please check our website for available jobs. We've seen a lot of your questions are showing up in the chat. I wanna give you a reminder that the chat is open for your questions. And also if you wanted to raise your hand, um, you can do that as well and ask your question. Uh, Ms. Fernandez, do you mind scrolling through and, and reading some of the questions that already have come in? Yes, give me a minute to make the chat a little larger so I can see a few more of your responses. Excellent. And I'll start from the top. Um, how many per table in the cafeteria? Uh, it varies depending on um, grade level, but between two and three students per table. Sorry, I'm sorry, three and four students per table. All right, do chill, do, uh, pardon me, do our children get mass breaks other than while eating? Yeah, you know, the um, each teacher is gonna establish when students um, can take a math, ma uh, mass break. Usually if an individual student needs to take a break, they can work that out with the teacher. Um, we're encouraging kids to keep their masks on as much as possible. Um, but each of our classrooms, our teachers will be making decisions about what the student needs. And um, if there is a mass break, it will be done in a safe and healthy way where it's one student at a time. Will we get a chance to meet our child's teacher? Well, in years past, um, we always had opportunities for our families to come to the school, meet the teacher, and see the classroom prior to the start of the school year. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that this year. Our teachers will be reaching out to you um, as soon as the class lists are posted and um, creating opportunities for you to connect with them, learn about the instruction in the classroom, and also about what some of the partnership and expectations are. Um, are kids going to be kept, kept in their classrooms for breaks with no mixing with other classes to keep their pods singular? We're cohorting to the best of our abilities, meaning um, at recess, they will um, be with grade level peers. During lunch, they'll be with grade level peers. Um, it's a little different than last year. The most important thing is that our students are back in the building. And because we're not in a hybrid model, you know, we have almost 400 students here at Chase Lake. The next one, I think we answered when we went over the vaccination staff and teachers. So all staff coming in contact will be vaccinated, I believe, by October um, 8, 7th or 8th, something like that. Um, 
And what happens if a teacher or faculty member notices a child is sick after the school day has started? Yeah, what I love about Chase Lake is that we have a, a full-time nurse here as a consolidated health service site for the district. So we have access to a full-time nurse, Nurse Leslie. We also have a designated um, quarantine room. So for noticing that one of our students is showing symptoms, we have a really safe place for them um, to wait for you to come pick them up. And we'll call you immediately and let you know. And the next question was um, asking about uh, mass breaks as well. So we went over that one. Um, there's a COVID, COVID outbreak. What will be the procedure for testing and letting the parents know? Yeah, if, if there is a positive uh, uh, case in school, uh, parents will be notified immediately. And also we'll start doing contact tracing to see who else who could have been exposed to it. And those families will be notified immediately as well. And I'm not sure if we have the answer for this, but what is the MERV rating on the filters that's for okay. HVAC? Yeah, that's an excellent question. I'm gonna hold on to that. And I'd like to um, email the person who I asked that because I, I don't know. And I'll check that in the parking lot. So we hopefully will be able to populate the answer in within the next few days. So if you check back to that link, which I'll put at the end of this, you can see that answer there. The next one is how do I get the school supplies list? Because I have gone to the school, but we don't have any out right now. I believe it should be on the website. Um, if it's not there already, it will be there in the next day or two. And I believe we, we do have uh, copies available here at the school as well. And I apologize, we we're a little bit late on that this year. Many of you know that we do have a new office manager. And so um, Ms. Vernon is uh, working on getting all those things ready and learning a brand new job at the same time. So our apologies for not having that out sooner. Um, if you're, if my child it, oh, yes, if my child is struggling or not thriving with the COVID policies, are we able to switch them to move to remote learning? The district has recently um, provided information to families about uh, requests to switch into remote, and I would uh, suggest that you go to go to that particular site on our web on the district website to learn more about that. And um, if you needed to, you could. Um, make a request via Google spreadsheet. For the younger kids getting new Chromebooks, will they be getting new login cards or will they use the ones from the previous year? That's an excellent question. I know they'll, they'll still have the logon cards. I just don't know if they're new yet. Ms. Huffman, do you have any information about that? I don't know for sure, Sean, Mr. Silver, sorry. Um, I think, <laughs> excuse me. I think everything would stay the same. Yeah, with their clever batches. Right, I, I don't think that would change. Um, my son has his Chromebook from last year. Will he be using the same one? Does it need to be turned in? If your son is in first grade or fifth grade, he'll turn it in for a new one. All other grades, the students will keep their Chromebooks that they already have. Um, if lessons are being created to accommodate quarantine, does that mean most assignments will be done in a Chromebook even when in the classroom? Um, some of the some of the assignments will be done on Chromebooks in the classroom, but many of them will be done the conventional way. We certainly want our students um, comfortable with the learning management system of Seesaw or Canvas. So our teachers are going to give them opportunities to practice and do assignments online. But the majority of the assignments the students will be doing will be um, paper, pencil, and hands on. And. Distance, another question about distancing in the cafeteria, what it might look like. I'm just gonna scroll back to the video, uh, to the picture so they can see that. They may have missed that. Ooh, so many things. Okay. Ah, there it is. So as you see, they'll sit in one row facing one direction um, and be filling up into the cafeteria and overflow into the gym. Um, what time can students arrive non-move 60 weeks? Uh, supervision begins at 8, 10 in the morning. How many classrooms are eating lunch at the same time in the cafeteria? How many classrooms? Let's see, I can tell you it's... Uh, 
between five and seven classrooms. Um, is there a glass divider between the classroom tables? No, there's not. And then the example, the children are um, for the classroom, they're paired up next to each other and there's no, is there a three foot separation or not? Um, to the best of our ability. Um, obviously with smaller students at those at that size table, there would be three feet between them. Um, but for our larger students, it's not gonna be exactly three feet, no. And unfortunately our classroom size is physical. We just can't fit everybody in as, as much in some of the physical, like the physical parameters of this classrooms. With the increase of outside air in the HVAC system, what will happen if we have smoke issues in the outside air? Our custodial team can make adjustments to the HVAC system daily. Will there be hot lunch? Yes, our uh, food services is, will be providing hot lunch this year. And then the menus are already um, posted at the district website. So if you're interested in seeing what some of that food is, it is at the district website. Um, what would be considered an exposure? Will the entire class be required to quarantine if a classmate tests positive or only those within three to six feet? Um, the proximity and the amount of time that they were uh, close to the person who tested positive are all factors that we would consider. Um, we work closely with our school nurse and also district folks to help us with con contact tracing. So it's um, on an individual basis. Is there an option to eat lunch outside under a tent or a play court? Well, um, the supervision piece is what's important. We wanna make sure that your student's supervised and lunchtime is when the teachers are on their planning time. So the students will eat in the cafeteria to make sure that they're supervised and safe. And I think the next question was also wondering if we had considered doing lunch outside. And I think that we just don't have the facilities for such a thing. Um, Correct. My child is new. I'm gonna skip over specific questions for specific families, um, but know that we will reach out to you. And just to clarify, again, it is first and fifth graders who need to turn in their Chromebook for a new one, correct? That is correct. Will the lunches be pre-packed and will food prep workers be wearing masks when they are preparing the lunches? Yes, masks are required by all district personnel. Do kids show up early for breakfast? Uh, historically, yes, but we have something new this year and it's called breakfast in the classroom. So every classroom, every student will eat in his or her classroom. So they won't eat their breakfast until the teacher opens their doors at uh, 8.35. And will windows be open in the classroom? That's a teacher preference. We've worked closely with our district uh, leadership and they said with our HVAC system being maximized, it's not necessary, but it's an option that teachers can do if they want to. Um, do parents need to be concerned about their child being vaccinated without the consent of the parent? Absolutely not. All student vaccines would, uh, it's only approved to students uh, age 12 and older so far. And if that changed, it would be with your, with parent permission only. Um, if quarantine is only required of students, there it is, sorry, it was a little smaller, within a certain distance or of a student or staff that tests positive, um, will the entire class be notified, not even, uh, even if not required to quarantine? Yes, um, there you would uh, receive most likely an email explaining what had happened. Um, is there a one-way system set up for walking around the school? Uh, we have arrow markers on the main hallway. And so in our, in our busiest spots, there's directional arrows on the ground. What type of disinfecting will take place after Having children eating in the classroom, does this take place before 840? Our custodial staff cleans uh, every classroom uh, in the evening. So students are entering to, into clean classrooms. 
And then after they have their breakfast, the teachers will have wipes and they will be able to disinfect and wash their hands. Yes. Um, why not eat lunch in the classroom if we are eating breakfast in the classroom? Right. As I said, it's related to supervision and lunchtime is when teachers are on their planning and their lunch period. Um, how about before and after school programs? Yep. Uh, I love it that we're partnered with the YMCA. And so the YMCA will be doing before and after school care. Um, is there a plan for kids that have academically fallen behind due to COVID um, starting in their kindergarten year? I know online learning wasn't easy for everyone. Yeah, and we're so aware of that. And, and our students are going to be showing up with different levels of social, emotional, and academic needs. And um, what I love about the staff is that we've been thinking about that and we've been thinking about um, how to assess students um, immediately at the beginning of the school year and seeing what their needs are and then teaching to meet those needs. And Ms. Huffman, if you wanted to add anything else. Um, I don't really feel like I have to add much, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. But yes, we're very aware. and. Um, as a as a reading teacher here at Chase Lake, um, we are working with the classroom teachers, so we're part of their team, part of the classroom teachers, part of your child's team. We will be assessing right from the get go, and um, we're going to be partnering with classroom teachers to really, really get in there and get, give the students what they need. One more, I believe it's the last one as of right now. If you have multiple children at Chase Lake and one is required to quarantine, should the other children in the home quarantine as well? You know, that's an excellent question. And I would defer to um, our, our, our uh, district staff who's in charge of doing the contact tracing to answer that. So in the unlikely situation where that does happen, um, you would be directed from someone at our district office uh, about the next steps. Um, I'm not sure if we have any answer for this one, but if the five day a week return to school changes due to Delta, how much notice will we get to return to last year's schedule? So if we're shifting to a remote model, I don't have an answer for that question. Yeah. Notice is not always the, the best thing we get. Um, can I, can I, um, Sorry to interrupt. I asked our librarian about the login information. And it's her understanding that the login for the computers is going to stay the same. She is also under the impression that the, the cards will stay the same, but she's going to make sure about that. So stay tuned for more information about that. We've got a few more. Can a negative to COVID test uh, replace the 14 day quarantine if exposed? Um, it might. Is there an average classroom size per grade? Well, I know our kindergarten classrooms have about 16 students. Uh, first grade's a uh, low 20s same with second grade third grades in the probably around 24 fourth grade is our biggest group high 20s and then fifth and sixth grade probably about 25 students in each classroom are there pe and art sessions how has the curriculum been affected well the great thing is our students will still have access to pe twice a week and to music twice a week and library once a week. The art curriculum is uh, teacher specific. Uh, what about kids having allergies with COVID-like symptoms, sneezing, coughing, et cetera? Right, um, if it was anything unusual. So if it was a, a fever that accompanied it or anything else that um, a different type of cough, then that would be a concern. But um, allergy-like symptoms are fine. Is there still library? Yes, um, they will still have library. What if the kids forget about the sanitizer? Yeah, the sanitizer is all over the school. You know, y'all remember we, we, we did hybrid last year, so we put a lot of good systems in place. 
So we had uh, hand sanitizer at the front of the school when kids were arriving. There was hand sanitizer at every entrance and exit out to recess. Um, when they left lunch, they were getting a squirt on their hands. Their teachers had bottles of hand sanitizers. Uh, we have access to sinks in the classroom for students to wash their hands with soap and water. Um, so a lot of opportunities for good hand hygiene. Uh, the cleaning procedure for the books if they are returned from being out to different students. Uh, the books have a 24 hour quarantine period. So uh, if a student checks it out and then returns it, the return, it sits for 24 hours before it goes back on the shelves. And how large are the lunch tables? They are, uh, I believe they are seven or eight feet. And those are all the questions in the chat as of now. If you have any other ones, please feel free to put them in there. And again, I will make sure that all of these links, I'm going to put this one in here as of right now. Sorry. Ooh. All the links that you've seen today in this slideshow, um, and hopefully the slideshow itself, will all be copied onto this bit.ly, this link. You can go there and bookmark it. And any question I wasn't able to uh, um, answer or was that that was specific, they'll be put into our document here. It will look just like this. Overflow from the presentation questions will be at the bottom. The resource and the link will be here. We thank you all for coming out tonight. We know you have busy lives, so we appreciate you being part of this conversation. Um, we know you have concerns about the health and safety of your student. And um, what I love, and I've shared this before, is that um, you know having a great nursing staff here in school and also having the opportunity to do a lot of these protocols um, last year as well, and they were proven really successful. And so your student's gonna be in really good hands. Thank you so much and have a wonderful night, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We encourage you, if you have any other specific questions, please feel free to call us at the front office. We are always happy to help. And correct, Jose, yes, they are larger. Um, just that smaller, smaller grades usually need a little more one-on-one -on -one time. As they get older, they become more independent learners. So the class sizes change. A big thank you to Celeste, our Spanish interpreter. We were probably talking too fast, so our apologies as well. If you have no further questions, you can feel free to log out and enjoy the rest of your day. Hi, Sheila. Thank you.